Chapter 25 Lizzie woke around 2 a.m., her head filled with the little bit of what Anna Mae had shared about the terrible thing that had happened to Laura Jean. She decided to check on Henry to give her something else to think about. She threw on a nightgown and fluffy slippers and padded to the kitchen. She lifted the damp towel covering the lightly oiled bowl where the sourdough rested. Cradling him in her palms, she lifted him onto the wooden kitchen counter. She wondered if this was what it would feel like to have a baby, waking at all hours, worrying if they were still breathing. You are my happy hobby, she told him as she began kneading. I know where everything comes from. No fake food additives to soften or preserve you. No pretending to be something you ain't. No heartache. Just a man in need of caring and honest tenderness, Jack said, his dusty boots clattering against the floor as he approached from outside, nursing a small box in his hands. You startled me. She pressed a hand to her speeding heart and panted lightly, staring at Jack. What are you doing creeping around at this time? Who's creeping? I was checking on the foal and saw the light on. He stood just inside the door, hands in his pockets, and a mischievous glint danced in his eyes. That Lizzie wrapped her arms around her chest and wished she had thrown on her robe. She pushed at her tumbled hair, willing her speeding heart to settle as he walked toward her. Your bread you love so much, he drawled. Henry and I ain't dissimilar. His cool-eyed, flirtatious expression vanished into a delighted grin. Is that so? Lizzie took the opportunity to take a long, languid look over his 6'2", brilliantly wrapped frame, packed into snug and faded jeans, a flannel shirt, and scarred denim jacket. Yep, I've got all the ingredients to make something pretty fine. Ain't that the truth, she muttered under her breath, plopping Henry back into the bowl to rise for the second time. It didn't take much effort to imagine how many times a stallion like Jack would rise, she thought to her chagrin as her face flushed with heat. I've got everything you need to make something that sends your taste buds soaring, Jack said. Hell yes. I'm the sort of guy you can't live without. And that was the problem. In a few months, she would have to live without him. It would be like suddenly discovering you are gluten intolerant and you can no longer enjoy all the things you love. Love. Nope, that can't happen. Absolutely, under no circumstances. Falling in love would be death. Whatever they had, whatever they were feeling, or faking or whatever the hell they were doing, was a short-term, temporary business arrangement. You think you're the best thing since sliced gluten-free bread, don't you, Jack? She said fiercely. I'm just saying I've got promise with the right touch, the right tenderness, the right... Okay, you can quit with the theatrics. What do you want, Jack? While you're so fixed on looking after Henry, I figured you might like to look after these, he said thrusting the small wooden box he was carrying toward her. Lizzie looked at the box and then back at Jack, surprised and intrigued by his unexpected gift. What is it? Something that might pique your interest, he said teasingly. Jack placed the wooden box on the counter and Lizzie leaned in closer, her curiosity growing. As Jack opened the box, Lizzie gasped. Inside were several orange and black striped caterpillars crawling over milkweed plants, and munching hungrily on leaves. Jack grinned as she looked up at him, her eyes wide. I thought you might enjoy a new hobby, Lizzie. You see, these little fellas are about to go into chrysalis. One day, real soon, they'll be butterflies like the ones you saw in the wildflowers. You said you loved them, so I figured... You remembered that? Jack shrugged. Don't go reading too much into it. Oh, Jack, that's so sweet, she said undeterred. When they're about to change, they're vulnerable to predators, Jack said. I thought you might want to offer them a sanctuary. They can stay here with Henry where it's warm and cozy. Protecting butterflies to be from predators, protecting them from being betrayed by something that looks friendly, but shifts into something hurtful, protecting caterpillars so they can become who they were truly born to be. How could she refuse? But what was in it for Jack? Why was he being so nice? Butterflies she whispered. I don't know a thing about raising them. I've been paying attention, Lizzie. I've seen how you nurture your sourdough starter, how you care for it like it's a part of you. I thought, why not raise these caterpillars alongside your bread? 
It would be another happy hobby to add to your growing repertoire. You'll soon get the hang of it, and I can help you. I know how to keep them safe and happy. And fed. Lizzie's heart fluttered at Jack's thoughtfulness. The idea of caring for the delicate creatures alongside her beloved sourdough bread, with Jack helping her, filled her heart with unexpected joy. Uh, are you trying to win me over with caterpillars, Jack? She teased. Maybe a little. But mostly, I just wanted to make you happy, Lizzie. To share in the magic of watching them transform and grow. Lizzie looked into Jack's eyes, contemplating his offer, wondering if the caterpillars themselves held the key to a deeper connection between them. All right, Jack. Let's do it. Let's raise these caterpillars together. Let's start our family. I don't think that's what my granddaddy had in mind, Jack laughed. But it's a start.